Okay, when we left off, I'm working on resubmission ideas and uh, improvements to exercise two. And I had just tried a bevel and emboss uh, texture on the my little hashtag to denote violence. I'm trying to decide if I like that or not. Let's try without it. It definitely adds something, but instead of that, let's just try uh, an inner shadow. Inner shadow will be directional. I can play with how much, and I can play with the color of it as well. I can always need to be, if I want to get fancy with the color theory, I can use a little bit of the complementary stuff. Could be green for the crimson, but maybe I'll, I'll push it a little blue. So I'll just a little blue. And noisy it is. I do want a little bit of that in there. And you're playing more with the spread. And with and instead of normal mode, I can also get more like. without it calling too much attention to itself, because the hand is the only thing that should really have that heavy embossing. Okay, what else? Well, maybe to go along with that violence, I can play with the shapes under the eyes a little bit. So for this one, for instance, the whole family of it, I can try changing its color a bit. Maybe to something a little purplish that mixes with the the brown underneath. To hit OK for the color, then I can play with the opacity of it. So something subtle like that. I can also swell it a little bit with control T. Whoops. Not command T. That opens a new tab. But control T. I'm going to make that mistake a lot. That is a difference between Photo P and Photoshop. I'm just going to tug it up there or down there and then with distort. Let's see. I can't warp it, but I can scale it, make it a little bit bigger, while still not getting too close, I hope, to the hand. But I might drop that hand down slightly anyway. Well, yeah, we'll see. So like that, 
and then I can give that a little bit of dimension. I don't know how much it needs. I don't think it needs the full emboss and texture kind of dimension, but I can give it a little bit of a, a satin overlay. Really soften that up. Now satin gives you kind of this ripple of lights and darks across it. And you can decide how dark I'm going to try pin light instead of overlay. How distanced. So satin can give you a lot of subtlety, and I have it really soft with the size. The less the size, the sharper it will be. Let's see. It kind of ripples out. So it looks fairly bruise bruise like. You just use a darker purple and that keeps it even more subtle. Then I can increase the opacity a little bit. Have more variation. And with increased opacity, then I can do things like change it from pin light. Let's try dissolve. There we go. It's a nice way to get a little shaped interior shadow. So just very subtle texture there. Even going to lighten it up a little bit more. And then I think I want some inner glow on it as well. And this time I want something a little brighter. Less spread out. So it doesn't look so harsh. And I'll go ahead and dissolve that too so it has texture to it. There we go. Okay. So that's making some conceptual sense. Now, my only remaining issue, because I don't mind the super flat here and super flat here, that's my nod to the original emoji. But I don't like how the eyebrows touch right there and touch right there. Those are tangencies in design. They're uncomfortable. The more I look at it, the more it will bug me. I also don't like the little sliver of black that's there for the hand. So these are little things that I can adjust. So it's behind the hand, it's on the mouth, so I can select that mouth shape and I can simply control T and I can warp just that one shape and just tug it up in this corner. So that feels a little bit more definitive. Even though it will make it slightly lopsided, but the hand's there, and that's important. And then I can also give that shape an outer. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's see. 
I can give the teeth shape, which has a gradient, I can make that gradient a little bit stronger on the side under the shadow. Or I could give the hand itself a drop shadow. Maybe giving the hand itself a drop shadow makes more sense, but let's try this. So I'm just going to push the black further. There we go. Into that gradient. That's just the shadow on the teeth. Yep, that works better. That fixes that tangency. Now what about the eyebrows? Well, I can select them. They're whole groups. And I can move the eyebrow. Whoops. I want to select the whole folder. Not just the individual layer. It's, oh, because I have multiple curves involved. That's right. So I have to actually select multiple folders here. So all of it's under the eyebrow. Okay, so that should move all together now. Except that I'm on auto select. I can uncheck auto select. Whew. And then it will all move together for me. So I can move that up and in a little. I can even control T and angle it. Remember, you don't need to match the original emoji. That just makes her look more distressed or makes this emoji look a little bit more distressed, but it might be too much. I still want it to match the one on the other side. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit and back it off. So that it has a lot of space. Now you can go back in your history and see. So that's what it was. This is what I was playing with. Yeah, I do like it a little bit smaller. So let's back it up a little bit more. I'm just using my arrow keys. See the difference between that and that. Yeah, I like that. Now for this eyebrow, I don't have auto select on anymore. Let me turn it back on. It will show me what layer that belongs to. It's this one. Always check with the eye. Uncheck auto select. Control T. Make it a little bit smaller so I can lift it up off of the edge of the head wrap and then tilt it in just a little bit. But I don't want to lose the presence of it underneath that, that teardrop or water drop. Okay. So now this speaks more to violence. than we did at the beginning. Uh, a problem with photo P is it only remembers fifth, uh, I believe 30 steps back. So it's good to save your work frequently. All right, looks pretty good. I actually didn't do the big speech bubble underneath. I brought it more in so I can go back to canvas size so I don't need all that extra space. And I can actually reduce the canvas size to exactly 10 by 10 inches and it will cut into my canvas. But my whole image is still there nicely. Then I can save it as my PSD and I'm done.